The past three years has been a trial in every facet, from government, scientific, spiritual, religion, self-preservation, policies, laws, principles, standards, all for the purpose to test the correctness of this one world order system and for depopulization. As you continue to listen, please hear clearly that God never imposes his commandments and covenant. God allows us to make a choice to do good or do evil. Remember this, evil works are often done with quick instant satisfaction to receive award possessions that result in having consequences along with fleshly feelings of guilt, shame, pride, and death. Award means to judge, to determine, to give by sentence. But good works comes with patience, long-suffering, trust, faith, and what you can not see. But trust knowing that God's word is faithful and sovereign. He never changes. In Matthew chapter 16, verse 27, Christ states, For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he shall reward every man according to his works. Now works can be good or evil. That is a choice that God has granted us. Thus I say to you, Christ came as our Savior, Redeemer, and King, so that the evil spirits of depression, sadness, hopelessness, helplessness, anger, jealousy, deceit, and violence could be bound and loosed into the abyss of H-E-L-L. That's hell. As our Savior, Christ came as an example, as our schoolmaster, and bore flesh to lead in recognition and how to overcome Satan, evil spirits, and sins. Preaching to us to confess our sins and sin no more, as written and stated by Christ in John chapter 8, verse 11. As our Redeemer, Christ took our redemption, delivering us from bondage and possession of distress. It is written in Romans chapter 3, verse 24, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ. Redemption is only possible with the confession and repentance of sins. For the action of repentance is to feel pain, sorrowful, remorseful, and regret. Christ stated in Luke chapter 21, verse 8, actually verse 28, and when these things begin to pass, then look up and lift up your heads, for your redemption draweth nigh. It is written in the Apocrypha, Sirach, and some may know it as Ecclesiasticus, chapter 17, verse 24. But unto them that repent, he granted them return 
and comforted those that failed in patience. As our King, of those that have been chosen from the call, Christ states in Matthew chapter 25, verse 34, Then shall the King say unto them on his right hand, Come, ye blessed of my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. I implore you, be not dismayed, broken, walking in darkness, broken hearted, nor lonely. For in God, Christ, and the Holy Spirit, the doing away with the old man, fleshly thoughts and desires, is to put on the new man with spiritual might and righteousness, immortality. For there is victory in God, Christ, and the Holy Spirit. As written in 1 John chapter 5, verse 4, For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Isaiah chapter 25, verse 8 reads, He will swallow up death and victory, and the Lord God will wipe away tears from all faces, and the rebuke of his people shall take away from off all the earth, for the Lord hath spoken it. Amen. So if you want true victory in your life, eternal life, deliverance, liberation, and peace, then repeat after me. First Chronicles chapter 29, verse 11. Thine, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty for all that is in heaven and in the earth is thine. Thine is the kingdom, our Lord, and thou art exalted as head above all. Amen. John chapter 8 verse 12 reads, Then spake Christ again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. I pray this is uplifting to you and encourage you to find a righteous minister who walks in the light and follow Christ's Gospels. Be blessed in righteousness. Lord, I lift my worship.